So we have the amazing John Norton, who we, we've mentioned we're so honoured and privileged to have on our call today. So John, I ha we'll hand it over to you. Thanks so much for joining us. We're very excited. It's been a while since we've actually spoken to you, but happy Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Wow. Good day, mate. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> have you been thank out you. here? Have you been yeah, thank you. No, no, I have not been to Australia. One of the few places that I really want to go and haven't been. So, uh, well, uh, I'm sure well that thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And what a great, great uh, tribute to all those who uh, broke rank and moved forward. It, I'll tell you, just sitting there looking at the names, I just want to shake everyone's hand and thank them from, uh, from our family. Uh, this has been a really, really special thing for us to see so many people benefiting by both the product of ASEA and the business of ASEA. And, uh, you know, it's just all positive. It's all going forward. So uh, my mom and dad came to my house yesterday for Thanksgiving dinner and my dad leaned over to me and he said, when you get a minute, come read some of the letters that I received for my 80th birthday. Uh, I think some of you know that he turned 80 about the time we did convention this year in Las Vegas and a lot of people sent letters to him and he said nine out of ten letters uh, include something that uh, that represented a benefit by the product ASEA to a family member or to themselves and he said if the world saw what was in these 500 letters or so, they would all jump on this because uh, it's pretty amazing what the product can do. And it's disappointing to a certain degree that we can't share all that it can do uh, using the language that we've been given. So uh, he's, uh, <clears throat> he's had to uh, to go through each one of them and kind of identify uh, all the things that uh, Sia is doing and he has kept a, a really great record of all of that and hopes to one day uh, show a lot of people the real value of the product. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I'll let you guys kind of drive, ask questions, tell me which direction you want to go, but um, uh, Melissa and Bart, thanks for having me on. Oh, thank, thanks, John. We, we heard you've got a lot of snow out the window too, don't you? Thanksgiving. <laughs> we do. Uh, it's we... coming down very hard right now. Very <laughs> hard. <laughs> but we're excited about that. We're, we're going to be there next week. I haven't skied for nine years, so we're, we're going to be hitting the slopes. Over oh, there. awesome. We're and glad yeah, that uh, All of the major resorts open today, so you're going to have great, great snow, a lot of powder. <laughs> oh, good. good stuff. Good. Um, we'll be actually up your neck of the woods somewhere. We'll be staying, renting a house in Sundance as well. So we're very excited because the reality is we wouldn't have been able to do that without a SEA, without awesome. the transformation of business of a SEA. So Absolutely. one of the things that I have been promoting in our newsletter about you is in terms of sharing the founder's story, you've more or less got the story behind the story because of who you are. And there may be a lot of new people on the line today and potentially a lot of people who haven't heard or simply your perspective, but also the ASEA founder's story. So if you don't mind sharing that with us, we would really be grateful. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be very happy to. I apologize for talking kind of quickly. There's a lot to the story and I kind of talk uh, quickly and I know a lot of uh, the new people on your team may not have English as a first language. So I apologize for that. I'm hoping maybe they can go back and listen to it. But I love the story. It's the thing that uh, gets me really excited about uh, both the product ASEA and the opportunity ASEA. Uh, uh, this started uh, probably 12, 13 years ago for my dad. The, the product that we now know as ASEA started even before that. And uh, my dad did very well in business. We grew up close to New York City. Um, where he worked for General Foods and then later Kraft bought General Foods and he worked for Kraft General Foods and uh, retired from Kraft General Foods as a vice president, working a lot with strategy and seeing how the business could run better and uh, made a name for himself and uh, a lot of people kind of perked up and 
uh, knew the name of Virtus Norton as a great strategist. And when he uh, retired to Park City, um, there, were, there were people, individuals, companies that were calling him asking for help. And he was retired comfortably and playing a lot of golf and having a good time. And uh, one company in particular said, please come out and help us. And uh, he decided to go out and, uh, and help them for a day at the request of Tyler, my, my brother. And uh, he, he met with them for a day and uh, said, well, you guys have done great so far, uh, but uh, you know, there's quite a bit more work that needs to be done. And if you want to take it to market in the path that you're now considering, you need a lot more money. And they said to him, can you help us find it? He said, well, sure I can, but you need to know that your piece of the pie, which is now the full pie, is gonna be a small sliver once these new investors come in because for you to take it uh, into the realm of the pharmaceutical industry, it'll cost you close to a billion dollars. And they all kind of uh, choked on that. Uh, they had uh, spent about $16 million, had worked it for a long, long time, gone through four CEOs and hadn't made a penny. And they were planning to take it forward and introduce it to the pharmaceutical world and uh, they said, well, would you be willing to run the company? And he said, nope, I have no interest. Thanks for the offer. They said, what if we were to sell it to you and we reinvested in you and you owned it? And he said, well, I appreciate it, but I don't think I'm interested. They realized very quickly that he knew how to take it to market and that there were a couple different avenues to do that in. And uh, a couple days later, he was playing golf with one of his buddies, and he told him about it. And the guy, uh, <clears throat> the guy stopped his golf cart and pulled his wallet out and pulled an old crumpled check out and wrote a check and kind of threw it to my dad. And they both started laughing. And he said, what are you doing? He said, I've always wanted to go into business with you. Let's go do it. Let's go buy it. He says, how could you be serious? You don't even know what this is. He said, it doesn't really matter. I just want to go into business with you. And so they, they actually thought about it and decided to buy the, uh, buy the business. Uh, it was delivered to them in the form of nine pallets of documentation, research, patents, uh, uh, information from major university, University of Indiana, and Washington, Stanford, Harvard, um, UCLA, a couple others that had done research on this product. And they really didn't know the first steps of, of how they should uh, make a play on this. It was a business play at the time. And they thought, let's prove what it is and introduce it and uh, understand a little bit better the mode of action or the mechanism of action in the body, why it works. And then we'll flip it and we'll just sell it to a big pharmaceutical company and they can take the ball and run from there. It's a business play and let's flip it and make some money. And <clears throat> they started introducing it to uh, individuals who had connections into the pharmaceutical industry here in the United States that ties all throughout the world, GlaxoSmithKline, Johnson Johnson, Baxter, Bar Pharmaceutical out of New Jersey expressed real interest and they uh, got on a a Learjet and flew to Salt Lake City and they uh, entertained them for a day while some of their scientists took the product uh, to some, uh, some um, labs here in the Salt Lake City area and tested it. And after lunch, they came in and the scientists walked in and they essentially nodded. They said they have it, uh, which was uh, redox signaling molecules. Now, I've got to back up just a little bit for us to understand that we had redox signaling molecules, we uh, contacted a, an atomic medical physicist by the name of Gary Samuelson. Some of you may still know that name. Gary initially was not interested at all. He said everything having to do with salt water has already been discovered. I have no interest. But uh, um, he said, I, I do want you to look at a couple other things. And they said, well, we thought you would say that. So they had brought a bunch of the um, a bunch of the science that some of these universities had gone through and they handed it to him and said, take a look at this and let us know what you think. 
And he looked at it uh, over the weekend and could not believe what he was seeing and what these scientists were saying. And when Monday morning rolled around, he got on the phone early and started calling them saying, how can you say this? How can you say that it does this and this and this? And they said, we don't know why it's doing what it's doing, but we, we can tell you that it's doing all these things. And uh, he got back in touch with my dad and said, I'm fascinated. He said, you've got my attention. Uh, I think you have something here that the world doesn't know about yet. And I do want to study it and understand it. And he pretty much locked himself in a room up close to the University of Utah and studied it for close to two and a half months and called my dad and said, uh, do you have any idea what you have? And he said, no. And uh, he said, well, I'm not going to tell you over the phone. Meet me at the office. And they walked in and he closed the door and pulled his chair up and sat down and he asked the question, do you know what you have? And they said, no. So tell us what he had. He said, well, um, about uh, 10 years ago at the time, scientists had discovered that there was a second set of molecules in the Krebs cycle. They're called Krebs cycle intermediates. And half of them are very powerful and they can be considered uh, free radicals, but they had never seen the other half. They're called the reduced species. And it's the other half of redox, reductants and oxidants. But he said together they form a balancing set of molecules that every cell in the body needs in order to function properly. But we had only seen half of the equation until this new uh, uh, you know, spectrometry microscope allowed them using a dye to see the second set of molecules. So all the textbooks were showing that these molecules were bad. And whenever you'd see them in a biology book, they'd always have big lightning bolts against them saying these are free radicals and they will kill the body. Well, what they didn't realize that this was the uh, weapon of choice for the immune system and that they are extremely valuable and without them you die in about 10 minutes. What they realized was that this second set of molecules would balance them and would allow them to work hard in the body without destroying other parts of the body. So one's the army, the other is the shield. And as he explained this, he said, this is called redox signaling molecules. Well, it went over their heads. They didn't, had never heard of that. It was really a new a concept even in the scientific field and he said, what's the application? He said, you're not getting what I'm saying. He said, you can't compare these to anything. There's nothing like them. They uh, work in concert with the body, the way the body was designed to work. Your body and the immune system is much more powerful than anyone really understands. And these are the key components that make the immune system work. So that's when they took it to the, uh, the pharmaceutical industry and Barr came out and made them a huge offer, a big check and said, but the condition is that you, uh, you have to give us all of your product, all of your patents, all of your documentation, everything that you have now, you've got to give it to us and we'll put it on a plane and take it back to New Jersey. And uh, my dad said, well, you know, I don't think we can do that. We've given this to a lot of people and they're coming back saying this is tremendous and I'm giving it to all my family and it had gone to 20 some odd countries and it, the word was really getting out that we had something special. It was helping a lot of people. And uh, <clears throat> they said, well, people die every day. You have to really uh, let them go. And my dad's exact words were, uh, that sounds a little harsh to me. And they said, well, if you want to cash the check and work with us, you've got to do that. Well, meantime, Dr. Samuelson's kind of kicking them under the table saying, don't do not do anything until we've had a chance to talk. And he kind of cornered them in the room before they left, but uh, when they were alone and said, uh, you know, I could live a hundred lifetimes and never see something like this. This belongs to humanity and we have to find a way to get it to people rather than give it to them because it was his understanding that they would bury it, that they would shelf it, that it was so powerful and effective that it would hurt the industry and hurt their products that they had spent literally hundreds of millions of dollars on. And he said, please don't sell this into this group. So they said, we'll give you our answer. They picked up and left, hopped on their Learjet, flew back to New Jersey. And uh, my dad and his partners went in and talked to Orrin Hatch, who 
was a, uh, a Utah senator and ran for president, uh, for, for a nomination for president of the Republican Party, I don't know, a long time ago. Um, but he brought them in and kind of cleared his calendar and they talked about it for a long time and he said, don't sell it to the pharmaceutical industry because they will either bump the price up on it so that it's very, very hard to afford for the average person, even through insurance, or they will shelf it, they'll bury it because it is a very powerful, natural, native, safe thing that you can put in your body. It will do a lot of good and that will actually hurt their hurt the industry a little bit. And so they thought about it and it was at that point where they kind of turned to each other and said, it's no longer a business play. This has so much value, so much benefit for so many people. Let's make it available. And he said, uh, Orrin Hatch said, you know, if you have your safety and toxicity testing done, you can bring this out tomorrow as a nutraceutical and just not make any claims. And that's what they decided to do. So at that point, ASEA was born as a network marketing company. And at that point, my dad said, you know, our goal is to bring it to the four corners of this earth and to help as many people as possible. And uh, he kind of turned the check down and said, let's start from scratch. Let's get this going. And uh, many of you know my sister, Nancy. Nancy and I sat in a room with about 16 other people. And we said, yeah, we'll do it. No tools no presentation, no pamphlets, no nothing really. And we started telling people about it. And, you know, the, the meetings were small and then they'd get a little bit bigger. But, you know, I always thought that each of us who understood what it was had a responsibility to share it with as many people as we could because the stories just started rolling in and now it's moving exponentially. I, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stories of how ASEA, and what I will say is that in and of itself, ASEA doesn't cure anything, but ASEA helps the body figure out a way to kick in the immune system and the immune system takes care of it. So ASEA is not designed to treat, cure, prevent any disease, but what I will tell you is that it is the basic building blocks of the immune system, that saltwater chemistry, which is kind of what ASEA is, is the language, it is the currency of health. And that's true of every living organism. And this has such great value that it's my belief that the company might very well grow to be, over time, one of the most important companies on the earth for health and wellness. And we're gonna help a lot of people financially along the way. So with that, I turn it back over to the two of you, the three of you now. <laughs> I, I'd just like to say something. I would like to just, you know, in terms of perspective and time, I mean, this was all, I mean, your dad was what, 69 years old at the time. He was looking to retire. And also we were talking 2008, one of the biggest, uh, you know, recessions in the, in the U.S. history. It, what a, what a time mm -hmm. to do that. So I just want to, I just want to express my gratitude. We'd like to express our gratitude actually for the courage that uh, that the Norton, that you and the Norton family had to to take this on, with no network marketing experience whatsoever, and just making the decision to do that because what a what a huge thing! I mean, you didn't need to do it. Um, it was really just a an incredible gift to leave a legacy like that. So thank you for your for your for your courage and your commitment to help get this out to humanity. Absolutely. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Melissa. Can I say one other thing as you're mentioning that? We didn't have any network marketing experience, but Nancy and I became the first uh, of a couple of founding triple diamonds in the company. And I would say to this day, I don't know how to do it. I still don't know how to do it. But what I knew was a fact is that if I told 10 people, a certain number were gonna come in and you can get a little better. And sometimes that number goes from four to five to six to seven even you're always going to have one or two that say not for me and that's totally fine but it is a numbers game for everyone and everyone needs to know even those director 300s and 700s who are just starting that one day with time and effort you will be not you can be but you will be a triple diamond i promise you that if you stay with it that will happen anyone can do it i did it and i'm not a salesman I'm not a network marketer. I just like telling people about it. 
And sometimes people would say, no, thanks, not interested. And I would say, doesn't matter. I want you to know that it's there. And someday you may need it. I want you to remember this conversation and know that you can go find it somewhere. And I felt like that was a huge obligation. And for the longest time, the money does not flow. And I want everyone to know that that is, that is network marketing. You have to really bust your butt for a long time that after a certain amount of time, it flows and grows very quickly. But I say to everyone, you're gonna go through the desert, it's okay, take a long glass of water and drink it up early. Know that you're gonna go through it. Know that you're gonna say, I'm putting so much effort in and it's not rolling in, but over time, it really kicks in and it really, really pays off. So I would encourage everyone who says, it's not me, I just can't do it, I don't know how to do it, just to share it with people and continue to share it with people. And over time, absolutely everyone can achieve whatever rank they desire. I honestly believe that. So I just wanted to say that, Mark. John, thank you so much for sharing that with us. You may not think you're a network marketer and you may not think you're a salesman. And I know in the very beginning there were no tools. And like you described with Nancy, you were, you were pioneering. But here's what you do have that made the phenomenal difference in my life. When you walked up our driveway in 2010 when we were having our garage sale and we were relocating back to Australia, we had a conversation. And at the time we were protecting income from another network marketing company that we'd been a part of for many, many years. And what I remember about you is it wasn't necessarily what you said, it was how you said it. So you had mentioned to me that your dad was forming this company and there was an atomic medical physicist that he was working with. And I absolutely knew in the moment because of who you are and how you represented to me, the conviction that you have, obviously the knowledge that you have, the convic the um, passion that you have for a seer. But the thing that I'll never forget is the absolute love and admiration you have for your dad. And so you were telling me about a seer and there were lots of other people around. And I remembered <laughs> at the time that this conversation was extremely special and that yeah. it wasn't a coincidence that I met you. It really was profound, <clears throat> John. I remember, I remember Melissa saying that, uh, saying, "Hey, we need to keep this in mind." And it wasn't. Sometimes it's not just the right timing. <clears throat> Gee, now, now you got me. Going. <laughs> Look, we we just really appreciate you. You know, the, there's so many coincidences that have come, that have happened to bring this technology to where it is. The, just the simple fact that it found its way into into Virtus's hands and your hands is is. Uh, is really pretty remarkable. I know. I know. Dr. Samuelson said that he felt like he was led, that he was guided to this, uh, to the discovery of the breakthrough, how to stabilize these molecules. So we're really in a very unique time and place right now, particularly as this is really starting to pick up some momentum. I know that you had to lay a foundation to begin with, just to really make this, to be able to 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 move this forward. Otherwise, it would have grown. In fact, I remember something that Berta said when I came to the fly-in in September of 2014, he said, if people really understood what we have our hands on, we would be bigger than Apple computer overnight. Um, unfortunately, just because of the nature of, of the wellness industry and the way it is, um, you know, this, we can't be quite as public as of, of what it does, but I think that you've really shared pretty well what, what's going on with this product and how powerful it, it, it truly is. Well, so you, I was just gonna say, so you, you made it into our driveway and you, you changed our lives, so. Well, I, thank you, Melissa, for sharing your emotion. I have felt that same feeling about relationships and about the product and about the opportunity. And our family talks about it with sincere reverence because we do feel like we have been part of a bigger plan and have been guided by Providence to do some of the things that we have done. And we feel like there is a, uh, there is a symphony going on and we may be playing a little tiny piece of that symphony, but a higher power is orchestrating all of this. 
and the symphony is beautiful beyond imagination and we all play our little part and once the music comes out you listen to it again and you realize the majesty of it and it's humbling it's humbling for every single one of us to be part of something so incredibly awesome and beautiful and powerful and it has uh it has some amazing uh components to it and everyone who understands the core of the business and the product feels it so thank you for your emotion um i'll let you know that every member of our family has felt the same way you and bart have about this and i i felt the same way that our meeting was not by chance and that, you know, um, those are the seeds that are important for all of us to plant. And, you know, eventually they'll bloom, they all will. And you never know that if you've shared something very, very important and valuable that someone two, five, 10 years from now may come back and say, I remember something and I need to go back and look at this again. And a lot of times we're prompted to do that for a very important reason. You know, I don't know how many of us it will help in the long run, health-wise, but there's value in our relationships as well. So thank you for that. Thank you so much, John. I've got myself together now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey, it's yeah, hey, there's one, one thing that, uh, that you shared a story, a Christmas Eve story. Um, I, mean, I know that you're just loaded with so much profound knowledge. I, I know that they've got some uh, information about about ath athletics and maybe we're not all athletes but we can we can all uh, you know if we have an active lifestyle we all always want to get the most out of our day I don't yeah. know maybe, maybe maybe two last things if you can share just just a couple little highlights on on what you've seen uh, in that regard with the athletics and also you had a, a Christmas a Christmas Eve story particularly we're in the yeah. holidays right now but it really was a powerful message on sharing this technology and I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you could share a couple of thoughts on those two things. Sure, I'd love to. You say uh, you're full of profound knowledge. I'm not. I, I do know how the product works, and I know all the stories. The stuff that uh, makes its way to a filing cabinet with a lock on it that we can't really share. So my conviction of the product is off the chart because I know what it can do. I know how many people it can help. And so uh, that's what drives me. That's what motivates me, knowing how important it is for people. Uh, but sure, I'd be happy to share a couple of things. See, um, how the product works in the body is a different uh, topic it, that I love talking about because it took me a long time to figure it out, asking a lot of questions and reading a lot of books. But it helps me to know that it's not just not miracle after miracle after miracle, that there's actually a process that the body uses to take, you see a product in and start to repair things, which is exciting to me because we know that that process uh, works in the body. The athletic side of things really came about through Nancy, my sister's husband, Mark Tunnell, who is a cyclist and he's on a team and they actually do real uh, rigorous, difficult, long, uh, long races together where they kind of work together as a team. And one morning he got on his bike with the rest of their team and went from the Valley of Salt Lake City up close to the top of, uh, of, I think it was Brighton Mountain. So all the way up to the top of the mountains above Salt Lake City. And about midway through, Mark had taken off well in front of the team and they were lagging behind. The entire team was trying to catch him and he was literally minutes ahead of them. Got to the top of the mountain, took his helmet off, got off his bike and waited for them. And they got to the top and said, what the heck just happened? We have been pushing as hard as we ever have and we can't keep up with you. What are you on? And he drove down to the bottom of the mountain, got on the, the phone and said to my dad, you have a performance enhancer. And he said, what do you mean? He says, this stuff enhances performance and it does so safe, legally. It's not a drug, all that kind of stuff. And so we immediately took it to uh, a number of institutions where they were measuring uh, VO2 max, which is uh, an interesting 
concept. It's essentially how uh, in tune can you get your body so that it can take the oxygen that you're bringing in and turn it into fuel. So there's kind of a, a number that you can get to for all athletes and it's called VO2 max and it actually increases your VO2 max or your threshold for uh, turning oxygen into energy. And uh, normally it takes athletes months and months and months to even move it a little bit. And we have shown that it can increase that up to 12% almost immediately. So a lot of the work that was done on this was done in the human performance lab at Appalachian State, working in conjunction with the University of North Carolina, Duke, Wake Forest, and a couple others in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, close to the Research Triangle Park, where uh, Dr. David C. Neiman did some studies on athletes given a SIA and a placebo to see if a SIA was real. And what they found was in their terms, astonishing, remarkable, in some cases, unbelievable. Uh, Dr. Neiman at one point said, I've been looking for this for 30 years. So this does not make you stronger. It doesn't make you faster. It allows you to go longer, harder. And so this is really for endurance athletes. And once you understand the, uh, the components that make up the different energies that you can take into your body, fats, proteins, and carbs, you understand that there's a relationship and really the only two energies are not proteins. Proteins will help infrastructure, but it's fats or carbs and they trade off. So if you wanna go fast quickly, it's carbs. If you wanna go long, it's fats but you have to have kind of a burning of one to have the other. So what this allows you to do is spare glucose in your bloodstream so that it can be there at the end of the race, allowing you to go longer. So, uh, you know, there's some diagrams that if I were to show you, you'd say, oh, it makes perfect sense. But essentially what you're doing is a lot of the athletes take in as much carbs as they can. Right before a race, you can get about 390 grams of carbs in your body. And at that point in your blood and liver, you're full, you can't do more. They've actually done studies and shown that, you know, if you continue to eat carbs, you can't get more than about 390 grams in there. So at some point you're going to run out, but ASEA helps the body use fats, fatty free acids uh, from adipose tissue, mainly, mainly in your stomach, and it can use it as a source of fuel. And when you look at what kind of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is built from fats as a, in comparison to carbs, you realize that that form of energy is more than two times as effective. Meaning if your, your car now gets, and I'm in the US, so I'll use miles, but say it's 30 miles to the gallon, this would give you 65 miles or 70 miles to the gallon. It simply allows you to go longer because you're using your own adipose tissue fats. And uh, it's used, the body's using that form of energy to help you go longer. So that's all I'll say on the athletic side, but it is a, a great, great advantage to those who use it, especially for long-term swimmers, hikers, bikers, anyone who's doing kind of more of a long-term thing versus sprinting. A buddy of mine went up into the mountains hunting elk and he's a bigger guy. And he took some early in the morning. He said, I could not believe the energy I had. He said, I walked the entire day and he lost quite a bit of weight. And it's a great, great uh, benefit to those who have interest in losing a little weight. But he said, I could keep going. I just kept going and going. And so if you haven't tried it for that purpose, you should. So let me turn quickly to uh, the story that you're referring to. This is something that happened uh, when I first uh, moved into my current house. We had some friends down the street that said, we'd love to uh, get together for Christmas Eve. And they were coming to our house and uh, it was literally five-ish, five or 5.30 in the evening on Christmas Eve and my wife was pre preparing some kind of dessert and missed some kind of uh, ingredient. And she said, would you quickly run to the store? I think they're open till six and grab this for me. I need it for what I'm making. And I 
hopped in my car and took off and it was very, very quiet in my neighborhood. Uh, you know, the Christmas lights were on all around me. And as I was driving down the street, it seemed like I was the only one there. And as I turned the corner and went down the street towards the grocery store in our area, I live kind of up on that mountain on the other side of uh, Sundance where you're headed. I'm on Kimpanogos Mountain. Um, I came to a four-way stop and looked left and right, seeing no cars were coming, started to go through, but a flash caught my eye on the left side. And I looked back over and realized that there was about a 10 to 15 foot flame coming up from the rooftop of one of the houses, not the house on the corner, but the next one in. And I sat there and looked at it and thought, it is so quiet, so serene, no one knows that that flame is there. And that house is probably pretty close to going up in flames. It had not snowed or rained, so everything was pretty dry. And I quickly turned my car left and parked in front of their house, threw my door open and ran up to the front door and knocked on the door. And I could hear people inside. And I wasn't just going to wait for 30 or 40 seconds. So I knocked on the door again. No one was coming. I was getting frantic for their safety and for their house. And I opened the screen door and kind of pounded on it. And I could hear them talking. And at this point, I gave them 10, 12 seconds. And I got frustrated. I started hitting the doorbell. And after a few more seconds, I checked the knob and opened the door. And it was open. And the whole family was in there on the floor, with the exception of one or two. They had several kids. And the dad looked at me like, what the heck are you doing? Get out of my house. Who do you think you are? And he was very, very frustrated and even mad. And I looked at him in the eye and I said, calmly, I said, your house is on fire. And he did not move. His wife didn't move. They thought, you're an idiot. Get out of here. And I said, your house is on fire. There's a flame on your roof. And he still didn't move. And I walked into his house, leaned over his couch, and I yelled at him. And I said, your house is burning down right now. Come out and I'll show you the flame. And he got up very slowly and I waited for him at the door and I opened the door for him and he walked out, looked up and couldn't see it. And he looks at me, I said, back up, it's there. And he walked closer to the sidewalk to the front of the house and saw a massive flame. At this point, it's 15, 20 feet tall. And it was burning right next to his chimney and his, his roof line. And he erupted. And he yelled to his wife and he yelled to his kids. And he asked me to go around the back and get a fire, a, a, a garden hose that I could use that hook up the front. We might be able to get some water on it. I knew it was futile, but um, I said, hurry and call the fire department. I haven't called them yet. And he called them and I sat there and helped. We couldn't, we couldn't reach the flame. It was a two-story house, pretty big house. And I sat there and I just went back to my car and I watched the whole house burn. And the family came out. One of the sons was literally in the shower when I went in. He came out with just a towel and a couple things on. And they kept running back in, go get this, go get that. Well, long story short, I went down and grabbed what I needed at the store and came back. And as I was driving up to our house, I could see huge billows of dark smoke rising above the tree line and I knew that the house was just engulfed in flames and it was uh, the whole family was out there there were neighbors trying to comfort them and I stopped for a minute but uh, you know there were 50 60 70 people out there with the fire department and hoses everywhere and uh, I drove by that house for the next probably two months and uh, most of it was covered in a tarp. They eventually had to tear down most of it and rebuild the whole thing. But later, um, I, I stopped at the house and I walked up and I knocked on the door. I said, do you remember me? And the guy said, no. I said, I was the dingbat <laughs> that, that walked into your house way back when. And he thanked me at the time. He didn't realize it, of course, when I first went in. But he realized that what I was doing was important to him and important to his family and for their safety. And the more I think about that, the more I tie it back to the way I feel about what I know a SIA can do. And 
sometimes people don't know that their house is on fire and we'll say something and they'll say, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you need to knock a little harder. Sometimes you need to push your way in and they need to see in your eyes, which is super important that you're sincere and that you're there to help. And when they see that, they will listen. And I can give you dozens of experiences with the SIA where people initially said, yeah, yeah, you're just another product. You're just another company. I don't know what this is, but it can't be real. And I have to push the door open, so to speak, and look in their eyes and say, I promise you, you need this. I promise you, you need this. This is valuable. Don't discard it uh, because it's, it's something that you're going to need and might really help you. And uh, again, I have the benefit of seeing a lot of the anecdotal evidence. I know what a see it is and it drives me and it should drive everyone who has seen what it is and what it can do to not stop talking about it with everyone. So pass it back. Uh, you're, you're an amazing human being, John. You've oh, saved thanks. lives in more, way than, more ways than one. And as I mentioned earlier, you've certainly made an incredibly huge difference to our life. We, I wrote a letter to Virtus, we both did, um, about our um, perspective and our stories and how our lives have changed. And all I can say is we are beyond grateful. Thank you mm. for being who you are, for having the conviction the believability, the compassion and, and the love that you have for mankind. And mm. we're so grateful to you and your family. Thank you for changing all of our lives all around the world. And it's only just beginning. So Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I'll let you get back to your family. Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving. And if you're hitting the Sundance slopes in the next few weeks, we'll be <laughs> a, probably a yard sale happening on the slopes, but we'll be there. Well, maybe we'll <laughs> find some time we can get together. Enjoy it. You're going to have a great time. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.